The Devil's Flea, an original audiobook by Ken's World of Science Fiction. Copyright 2023, Ken's World of Science Fiction, all rights reserved. The golden rays of the setting sun stream through the tall windows of Dr. Richard Waltman's opulent mansion, illuminating the intricate details of its Baroque design. The grand staircase, adorned with priceless artwork and sculptures, stood as a testament to his wealth and ambition. But despite the impressive surroundings, an air of tension hung within these walls, as palpable as the scent of antique mahogany that lingered in the halls. In the study, Dr. Richard Waltman paced back and forth, his brow furrowed in deep thought. His greying hair and deep-set eyes revealed the dedication and intensity he had poured into his life's work, backwards time travel. A brilliant yet obsessive scientist in his late fifties, he was haunted by the ridicule from his peers and driven to make a name for himself in the scientific community. Richard, darling, you really should take a break, came the smooth, sultry voice of his wife, Melissa, as she entered the room. A beautiful and elegant woman in her early fifties, she appeared more concerned with money and status than with her husband's groundbreaking research. You've been at this all day. Every second counts, Melissa, he said, not bothering to look up from the calculations spread across his desk. Scientific breakthroughs like I will present tonight only come once in a lifetime. I must be thorough. Perhaps if you put as much effort into our marriage as you do into your experiments, we'd be happier, she muttered, under her breath, fingering the pearls around her neck, a reminder of the lifestyle she was determined to maintain. Did you say something? Richard asked absent-mindedly, scribbling down a series of equations. Never mind, she sighed, resigning herself to the familiar feeling of neglect. Your cousin Wayne is here. At that moment Wayne sauntered into the study, a disheveled man in his mid-forties with a half-empty bottle of scotch in hand. Hey, cousin Richard, he slurred, taking a swig from the bottle, still trying to rewrite history. Wayne, must you always be so crass? Melissa snapped, looking him up and down with disdain. Relax, Mel, Wayne replied with a smirk. Just thought I'd see what my dear cousin is up to. Doesn't concern you, Richard muttered, his focus never leaving his work. Richie, what's with the big party tonight? I noticed that your brainiac friends are starting to arrive downstairs, which makes me really wonder why you invited me, Wayne said, though his tone was more sarcastic than concerned. It's a surprise, Wayne, and believe it or not, you are part of it. Melissa interjected. My parents have arrived as well. They're waiting in the living room. Ah, yes, Richard said, finally looking up from his papers. I suppose we should go greet them. The group made their way to the living room, where they found Melissa's parents, Margaret and Joseph Lancaster, sitting stiffly on the plush sofa. Both highly religious and sceptical of science, and all of its blasphemous discoveries that contradict the church. Margaret, a thin woman with sharp features, glared at Richard as he entered, while Joseph, a stocky man with a bushy moustache, stared vacantly at the floor. Also present are several ex-colleagues from the prestigious university, where he last pursued time travel research, before being forced out for his controversial theories. The list included Dr. Laura Simmons and Dr. Tom Nguyen, both were friendly, but opposed his work in backwards time travel, dismissing it as unsupported by any modern scientific theories. Richard, Margaret said icily, I am curious as to why you felt the need to invite us here. You already know what we think about your blasphemous theories. Science will never triumph over God's will. Her husband never looked up from the floor. Margaret, it's not blasphemy, Richard replied, struggling to maintain his composure. It's progress. This could change everything for humanity. Or it could destroy us all, she countered, her eyes narrowing. Have you ever considered that? Dr. Waltman ignored the comment. After the last of the group arrived, Dr. Waltman addresses the group. Everyone, please gather in the study, he said, clapping his hands together to capture their attention. As his guests filed into the room, he felt a mixture of excitement and trepidation. Thank you all for coming on such short notice, Richard began as his family members and colleagues settled into the opulent armchairs and sofas arranged before him. I have an announcement that will change the course of history. Another one? Wayne muttered sarcastically under his breath, 
earning a disapproving glance from Melissa. Indeed, Richard continued, ignoring his cousin's comment. I have successfully invented time travel into the past, and tonight I will take you all back to witness one of the most spectacular events in history. The Chicxulub asteroid impact in Mexico, the very impact that caused the extinction of the dinosaurs. Are you serious, Richard? Professor Mike Mansfield scoffed, crossing his arms over his broad chest. You expect us to believe this nonsense? Believe what you will, Mike, Richard replied, locking eyes with his nemesis. But when I prove it, there will be no more doubt. Richard, this is madness, Dr. Laura Simmons exclaimed, her short cropped hair quivering with indignation. Even if it were possible, which I highly doubt, the risks are far too great, Dr. Waltman quickly responded. We will be observing the event hundreds of miles from the impact, as mere spectators. A few seconds after the asteroid strikes the Earth, I will return us back to this very spot unharmed. However, you are under no obligation to come. But those who choose to accompany me will make history. Fine, Dr. Simmons said. I guess we have nothing to lose by witnessing your attempt, so let's see this supposed time machine of yours. Very well, Richard agreed, his heart racing as he led them through the mansion's labyrinthine corridors. The group followed, a mix of skepticism, curiosity and concern etched across their faces. Richard, Melissa whispered as they walked, are you sure about this? What if something goes wrong? Nothing will go wrong, my dear, Richard reassured her but his voice betrayed a hint of uncertainty. I've tested it thoroughly. Trust me. Trust you, she snapped, her eyes narrowing. That's becoming increasingly difficult. Then trust in science, he replied, his jaw set firmly. For tonight, we shall make history together. Entering the laboratory, Dr. Waltman faced his guests, who stared at the complex machinery before them, their expressions ranging from disbelief to genuine fascination. Behold, he declared, gesturing grandly, the key to our past. Welcome to my inner sanctum, Dr. Waltman announced, as he guided his guests into a dimly lit chamber, the cool air tinged with the scent of ozone and metal. The hum of machinery enveloped them like an otherworldly embrace. Richard, this is incredible, whispered Dr. Nguyen, his glasses reflecting the flickering lights that danced across the room as he peered at the colossal machine dominating the space. Thank you, Tom, Richard replied, his heart swelling with pride, before quickly switching to the role of mentor. Now everyone gather around the central console. I will explain how we shall traverse time itself. The group huddled around the monitor as Richard tapped away on the keyboard, the screen illuminating their faces with an eerie glow. Melissa stood close by, her elegant features betraying a mix of curiosity and fear. Time travel requires the bending of space-time, Richard began, his voice steady and authoritative. Using precise calculations and the energy generated by this machine, I have discovered the specific frequency required to open a temporal rift. By adjusting the coordinates, we can pinpoint any moment in history. Sounds like something out of a B-science fiction movie, Wayne muttered under his breath, taking a swig from his flask. Richard ignored him, his focus solely on the task at hand. Indeed, Dr. Simmons interjected skeptically, arms crossed, but what about the temporal risks? Paradoxes disrupting the fabric of reality? Are Dr. Simmons always the voice of caution? Richard said, half smirking. I assure you, I've accounted for every possible outcome. We will merely be observers unable to interact with or alter the past. Can you really guarantee that, Richard? Dr. Nguyen asked, his gentle smile belying a deep concern. I can and I will, Tom, Richard replied, his gaze fixed on the screen. Now, brace yourselves. As he initiated the sequence, a low hum filled the room, crescendoing into a deafening roar. The air crackled with energy, and the world seemed to blur and stretch around them. For a brief, disorienting moment, they were suspended between reality and the abyss. Then, just as suddenly as it began, the cacophony ceased. The group found themselves standing in a lush, prehistoric landscape. The scent of damp earth and ancient greenery filled their nostrils, while vibrant ferns brushed against their legs. 
By the gods, Dr. Nguyen breathed, staring wide-eyed at the new world surrounding them. Impossible. Richard, you've actually done it, Melissa whispered, her eyes sparkling with awe as she gazed at the brontosauruses, grazing serenely by the lake in the distance. Other small dinosaurs scurried about, oblivious to the visitors from another time. Welcome, Dr. Waltman announced triumphantly, to the Cretaceous period. The tranquility of the scene shattered as Dr. Waltman's gaze snapped from the brontosauruses to a streak of fire carving its way across the sky. His heart pounded in his chest, each beat echoing in his ears like a drum. Everyone look up, he shouted, pointing at the rapidly approaching asteroid, Panic replaced awe on their faces as they took in the nine-mile-wide monstrosity hurtling towards them. Dear God, is that... Dr. Simmons's voice trembled. Professor Mansfield, his earlier arrogance now replaced with dread, pieced together their location. Look at the angle of approach. We're not hundreds of miles from the danger. We are on the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. The impact site, he exclaimed, his voice quaking. Dr. Waltman allowed a knowing smile to play across his lips as he addressed his shocked and terrified audience. You are correct for once, Professor Mansfield, he said, his voice dripping with disdain. Hey, Richie, how about hitting the reverse button on that thing? Wayne demanded, his usual sarcastic tone replaced by genuine terror. But Dr. Waltman did nothing. He turned away from the sight of the approaching asteroid, his eyes scanning the faces of the group huddled together like frightened animals, everyone frantically asking questions in an attempt to understand what was happening. Their fear and desperation were palpable, yet he felt nothing but cold anger burning within him. It was time for them to know the truth. Quiet, Dr. Waltman roared, silencing their panicked whispers. You want an explanation? Fine, I'll give you one. He locked eyes with Melissa, who shrank back under his steely gaze. You, my dear wife he began, enunciating each word with icy precision, have made a mockery of our marriage. Your countless affairs have left me bitter and disillusioned. Melissa's face drained of colour, her carefully maintained mask crumpling under the weight of Richard's words. Wayne, cousin, you've leached off my wealth for years, drowning your potential in alcohol while I've been consumed by my work. Wayne looked away, unable to meet Richard's gaze, the flask in his hand suddenly heavy as lead. Mike, he continued, turning his attention to Professor Mansfield, your jealousy knows no bounds. You've ridiculed my ideas, sought to undermine me at every turn. Mansfield clenched his fists, seething but unable to find the words to deny the accusations. And the rest of you, Dr. Waltman sneered, gesturing toward his former colleagues. You've all treated me like a madman, whispering behind my back while working to ruin my research. Richard, please, Dr. Nguyen implored, his voice cracking with emotion. This isn't who you are, isn't it? Dr. Waltman retorted bitterly. I've spent my life being mocked and belittled, forced to watch you all live your lives without consequence. Well, now the tables have turned. He reached into his pocket and withdrew a small metallic device. The group's eyes widened in realization as they saw the familiar design of the time machine's control module. Richard, don't, Melissa cried out reaching for him. Too late, he replied, smashing the device underfoot. Now we're all trapped here, together, until the end. The group stared at the broken pieces of their salvation, their hearts pounding with a newfound terror. They could feel the heat of the approaching asteroid on their skin, the air growing thick and stifling around them. Richard, Dr. Simmons whispered, her voice trembling. Why? Because, he answered, his voice hollow. I wanted you all to see my greatness before it was too late. Now you have no choice but to bear witness to the end. As the fiery sky consumed the horizon, the fear in their hearts escalated to unbearable heights. In that moment, they realized there was no escape from the hell Dr. Richard Waltman had created for them. Look around you, Dr. Waltman said, his voice tinged with a mixture of pride and bitterness. I've done what no one else could. I've proven my theory, despite the laughter and scorn of my peers. He swept his arm out to encompass the prehistoric landscape, the massive brontosauruses grazing in the distance, the smaller dinosaurs darting through the underbrush. The heat of the approaching asteroid intensified, 
casting an eerie orange glow over everything. Remember Luis and Walter Alvarez, he continued. They were ridiculed for years for their theory that an asteroid impact killed the dinosaurs. It took them a decade to prove it. Now I have not only proven my time travel theory, but also brought us to the very moment that gave birth to theirs. Melissa's eyes filled with tears as she stared at her husband. But Richard, what about our lives? What about our family? Family, Wayne snorted. All you ever cared about was your precious reputation and your boyfriend's Melissa. Shut up, Wayne, she snapped, her face flushing with anger. Ah, yes, Dr. Waltman said, turning to face his cousin. Wayne, always drowning his sorrows and resentments in a bottle. Do you really think I was blind to your jealousy, to how you felt trapped in my shadow? Wayne's eyes flashed with surprise, but he quickly masked it with a sardonic smile. Well, Rich, guess we're all trapped here now. You finally got what you wanted, didn't you? Richard, please, Dr. Nguyen pleaded. We understand your desire for recognition, but this, this is madness. Madness? Dr. Waltman scoffed. No, this is vindication. I will go down in history as the man who defied the boundaries of time and space. You all had a part in this, whether you realize it or not. He looked at Dr. Mansfield, Dr. Simmons, and Dr. Nguyen, his former colleagues. You three, he said, his voice cold, who derided my work and dismissed my ideas as mere fantasies. You never believed in me, but now you have no choice but to accept the truth. Richard, is this really what you want? Dr. Mansfield asked, his voice barely audible above the roar of the approaching asteroid. More than anything, he replied, his eyes shining with defiance. I have proven myself beyond any doubt. Now we shall all witness the end together. The asteroid loomed in the sky, a monstrous harbinger of death, with its red-orange glow casting eerie shadows on everyone's faces. Panic spread through the group like wildfire as they watched their doom approach. Richard, for God's sake, you can't just let us die, Margaret Lancaster added, clutching her husband's arm tightly. Dr. Waltman sneered at his mother-in-law. Why not, Margaret? Don't you want to meet your God? Others in the group begged and pleaded, but there was no turning back. The unstoppable force of the asteroid drew nearer, its fiery glow casting a final, haunting light on the group as they faced their imminent demise. And amidst the chaos and fear, Richard Waltman stood tall, his last moments filled with the terrible, bittersweet victory of proving himself to the world, even if it meant taking them all down with him. The piercing cries of distant pterosaurs filled the air, as if mocking the terrified group of time travellers. The once clear sky was now tainted by the fiery approach of the asteroid, casting a sinister orange glow on their faces. Panic clawed at their insides, a primal instinct urging them to flee, even though they knew there was no point in running. Dr. Waltman addressed the group for the last time. With a maniacal glint in his eye, he said, You may be interested to know that Chicxulub is a Mayan word that means the devils flee, and that's precisely what you all are to me, fleas that have ridden on my back like parasites on a dog. His wife Elizabeth, desperate and trembling, pleaded with him, But Richard, you will die too. Dr. Waltman produced a faint smile. I have proven that I was always right, he declared, but everyone in my life has been a misery to me. I have no reason to continue this existence, and so we shall see the end together. The heat intensified as the asteroid sped toward their exact location at 45,000 miles per hour. It struck with a force 100 million times the energy released by the most powerful nuclear weapon ever created. In a microsecond, the world erupted in a blinding blaze of heat and fire. In the end, there was only light. End of the Devil's Flea, a Ken's World of Science Fiction original audiobook. Copyright 2023, all rights reserved.